Our next step is removing the old brake booster and master cylinder out of this Cadillac. Again, the only reason why I went with the Caddy Daddy product is they say that everything will fit right here and it'll connect to the stock brake pedal and I gotta keep my air box. What they don't tell you is this old booster has a vacuum tank reservoir thing right here. Now, I'm thinking that is probably just old technology that I can do away with. So for this install, I'm just gonna run a line from the intake to the booster and then be done, okay? We're gonna keep it that way. I have to remove the booster, there's a brake line here, and then we have four bolts that hold it to the bracket, and then this line. Not really sure how that comes off, but I'll figure it out. Looks like there's a looks like there's a pin down the depths down there. And then that should just come out, and then we have to remove this bracket. I remember this bracket being kind of annoying before. It looks like it shares a mount with the uh, control arm, but we'll get to that when we get to that. There you go, it's out. And there's the old stock bracket and all the old brake lines, which we will have to figure out what to do with all those here soon. So as you can see, the only part that has brake fluid is this part up here. This is all the vacuum booster that basically uses vacuum to help push the brake pedal down. Uh, again, this was rebuilt 10 years ago. There's really nothing wrong with it. It might need a little bit of a boot, but it's all there. Um, I did crack the driver's side when I was replacing the driver's side uh, drum with a disc. I left the um, obviously the brake line open and all the fluid dripped out, and it just shows you that you know you have one little leak. This will go out, and then the second it's empty, you have no brakes. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to the dual is because we want to upgrade that safety feature basically. So here is the new booster and master cylinder and if we lay them basically side by side they are pretty much exactly the same length. Um, it looks like the bracket mounts very similarly and we have a little different of a rod but it does come with its own rod that will thread onto there and then go into the original uh, location. For the old one. So here comes the more challenging part. So this was a single single feed brake system. Basically you push the brake pedal, hydraulic pressure comes down this line and then it goes to the rear brakes where it tees off and then it goes one to the right side and one to the left side. And this little four-way T right here. So we're gonna completely get rid of that. I can't tell if that's been leaking or something else hopefully it wasn't that but you know what that's from when I disconnected the brake line it kind of just ran down the frame um, but we're gonna get rid of that completely I did replace the line this back line that goes through the rear brake so that's re replaced but I need to figure out a line situation for everything else now with that being said uh, since we're doing disc brakes we're doing a proportioning valve so we have to plumb that in somewhere. Now I'm hoping what I can do is, I don't know, maybe put the proportioning valve in this area right here. I might be able to mount it right here in the, the wheel well. I don't know. I do know, I believe the proportioning valves need to be fixed. You can't just have it floating in the air. So held up by the lines basically. Um, so we'll We'll kind of figure that out as we go. Maybe that fender bolt right there will be a good a good place to mount a proportioning valve. Luckily, we know that everything from here back is pretty much open space and that obviously I can run lines underneath uh, the master cylinder booster. At least the old one I could. We'll see about the new one. But Yep, we're going to take this bracket out and we're going to put the new one in and that will kind of 
give us an idea of what needs to go where. I'm also gonna take uh, some of these brake lines out. So this one obviously that goes in the master cylinder needs to come out and then this little one that goes over to the left wheel also needs to come out. So I've ran into my first large issue in making this work. <clears throat> if you see here, this is the old bracket that held, held on the brake booster. I actually had to cut it in order to get it to remove thinking, oh, the new one will fit just fine. But this little nub on the exhaust manifold, it made it hard to get this off and it's hard to get the new one on. My, my thought was, you know, I'll mess up the bracket I'm not going to use and I'll be fine. But it looks like I'm going to have to cut this nub off of my manifold. Really, I really don't want to do that, but I don't really see any other choice. Um, it's just too tall. It just won't work. Here's the bracket for the new brakes. And it hits that nub right there. You see that? Now that nub really doesn't do anything like nothing's mounted to it maybe in a previous year that they had drilled those out to mount something I don't know I don't want to cut it but I kind of I kind of feel like that's my only option is to get that out of the way and then this should slide down I hope after some time with the grinder I was able to get this to clear the manifold it's really close but it does clear uh, the only other issue that I had was this coolant hose that goes to the heater cores and all that stuff will be in the way. I'm going to have to do something with that, but uh, that's what's left of the nub. It's pretty much gone and I have about an eighth of an inch of clearance from one side to the other. So now we can bolt this in. All right, issue number two that I had to overcome is this heater hose. So. Uh, if you look back in the video, this hose would come up here and run along the fender and then back down. I got it to go underneath this bracket, but when you put the brake booster in, it'll rub on that hose and the booster actually won't fit all the way down because the hose is in the way. Now we're still in trial fit mode, so obviously this is not the, the final product. I'll probably buy five feet of three quarter inch heater hose and then run it underneath the master cylinder up around the top and then back down. That's the idea at least for now. I just, there's just no way it's gonna fit where this factory location has it fit. So, one more hurdle overcome. And again, I will change this up so it looks a little bit different. I won't have a 90 degree T in here, but it will work for now for the trial fitting purposes and later on I can swap it out. Here is the booster and the master all mocked up and this is where I need to decide where I want to mount my proportioning valve for my brakes. <clears throat> so the Tri-5 Chevy guys do this all the time. So they have a really cool bracket that mounts the proportioning valve kind of right underneath here. Just like that. Which would be good except for, I think it makes everything just way more complicated. Um, what I think I want to do is I want to mount it down here, which, yes, it makes it a little bit more deep in the depths, but all the lines go to that point anyway. You can see, I pretty much have it written on here what does what. Line out to the rear, line to passenger front, line to driver front, and then these come from the master cylinder. And in a Corvette, that's kind of the way that they're already fit and bent. I was thinking that the bracket would let me run them through the bottom, but it doesn't. <clears throat> so the way the factory runs the, I guess it would be the, the one brake line from the front, it runs underneath the booster through the triangle shape part on the bottom of the bracket. And I think I want to replicate that on this car just because any other path really kind of runs right along where the exhaust is and I'm not a big fan of that. And there's really not much room, especially if we're doing a dual line type setup. So anyway, I think I'm gonna edit, not edit, 
I think I'm going to modify my bracket a little bit to make a space for the actual brake lines to come out. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, considering all the brake pedal goes into that bracket, but we're just going to see. All right, I've decided how I'm going to mount this. Basically, I'm going to put it right here. You see I've drilled a, a different hole in the frame to mount it. The one that is there you could use, but the problem is your inner fender is right here and there's zero room to get anything anywhere. And the other reason is because I can use this passenger side brake line pretty much as it is. So it's going to mount right about there. We'll have a clear shot to the back for the rear brakes. The front brake has a nice shot over to the, the line. I mean the line's going to be like that long. And then also it gives me room on either side to use basically to put the lines up and then over down this way up to the master cylinder so once I get you know three brake lines in I'm about halfway done I drilled a hole I made a bolt for it to hold it down and it should be good to go that took way longer than it should have but I have the proportioning valve mounted and the all the lines for the actual wheels done so we have passenger Passenger front, driver front, and then the rear brake line. Um, I was able to use the original line on the passenger side with an adapter, and then I had to obviously make a new uh, line for the driver's side. That's what took the longest because it's a really awkward bend, and it's hard to do with the bender I have, the line bender. It doesn't make that tight of a bend, so anyway. That's done, finally, and now we can try to figure out what we're going to do with these other two lines that go from the proportioning valve. They're going to run maybe between the bracket and the, the fender up to the master cylinder, which is around, about right here. That was a beating. So these two lines, I ended up routing them pretty much in the space in between the master cylinder booster and the fender and they don't rub in anything they fit so it took a long time to get these in the right bends one problem I did have was this fender was in the way so you can loosen that bolt and that bolt and then also these three bolts on the bottom one two three and everything will kind of just shift out just enough so you can get your wrenches in there Whew. but now Finally, time to put the, I need to put the rod from the pedal to the booster in. I need to connect all of my coolant lines. I'm going to reroute them so they come up this way and then up this part of the, on top of the fender instead of around here like they were. So I bought extra lines for that. And yeah, whew, that was a beating, but it's finally done. All right, she's in. A couple things. I was able to reroute this hose and I kind of held it with a clamp that I made out of a uh, actual hose clamp. Good enough. It'll work. Keeps it out of the way. I did have to zip tie uh, my power steering return line to the supply line so it wouldn't rub on the brake pedal rod. But it's all in there and it's all attached. I think we're good to go. Wheels are on. So this will be the first drive first test of the brakes I gravity bled them and I also bench bled the master so fingers crossed it'll be good enough buddy you're about to get scared when I uh, turn this car on you're just enjoying the sun let's see what happens Let's see if it holds it in drive. That did absolutely nothing. And only because of the parking brake, I was able to stop. So clearly, they need more bleeding. 